What's up guys, welcome to the video. Uh, today I have Adam Evans with me, who got top 4 at the singles tournament at the UK Games Expo, so welcome to the channel Adam. Thank you very much. And congratulations on top 4, of course. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, how, how long have you been playing the game? Where, where do you usually play locals? Uh, so you play locally in Swansea, been playing for about, about a year, year and a half now. Um, we have a fairly competitive locals. We normally pull between 13 and 14 players. Okay. And there's a lot of really strong players there. So I uh, had a lot of help on the, the deck building on their inputs to put this together and, and do so well to, uh, in the event. Yeah, nice. Were you at Euros as well? I didn't, know. This is the, the first big Dragon Ball event I've been to. Okay. All right, great. But uh, yeah, 13 14 is a decent number, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll just jump into your deck. You play Sharon Gogeta? Yeah. Yeah, and so... Just got it here. Do you want to run us quickly through your list and sort of your card choices? Yeah, of course. So uh, um, you've got the same list in front of me, so we'll just go from top to bottom then. So yeah. um, we went with the one Borgos, um, mainly just because the Super Sharon had got hit. So we didn't expect to see too many decks untapping. And... Um, we don't think it's that great against super, uh, against Janemba either, sorry, because Janemba tend to really untap during your turn when you're being mm, aggressive yeah. with their Dimension Magic, the defensive sensor beans and whatnot. So um, we didn't find it too great in the Janemba matchup either. We cut it to one just in case because at worst it's a one-drop draw card and it's a blue mana. So, But it, it can come in helpful in those matchups. Sure. One was the right number, I think, so... We would definitely keep it like that. Um, for the vanilla uh, Son Goku for at all cost Vegeta, the reason why we went with the um, this option instead of the 15Ks and the um, the Goku that can untap two is because the at all cost Vegeta. Um, firstly, it can help you dig into your life. So if you do have any cards that are stuck in your life, because you know what your life is going to be after searching with the Dragon Balls then you know exactly what's in your life so you can pull those cards out of your life if you need them and also it gets that triple strike with a lot of damage and it can pop cards it untaps it draws it does so much so you're not purely relying on the gogeta for a finish mm -hmm. i won quite a lot of games with um all cost vegeta as well okay um a, a great tactic with it is you can uh, as you see further down the list i've got a uh, three figure majesty so what i would do is on my when i have the four mana is i would use the child's uh, sorry not the child's wish the um it's the uh, uh, world peace world peace that's the one yeah sorry my brain's gone blank there <laughs> uh world world priest to, to bring one back tap four to bring another one out so i've got two on board use them both to untap four mana draw two cards then i'd play the all cost vegeta untap another mana draw another card and then i can pass so i've got that one energy open and I've got a very threatening board, and I, I know I'm going to kill them next turn uh, if they can't clear it. So I've got the one energy safe, yeah, and then yeah, on I, my turn then. yeah. I, I did see you favour the double Shenron play quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's so strong, because if you have the one out, it can be removed. If you have two out, it's very difficult to remove the two, and the fact that you can just restand the four mana... Um, draw two cards and then on the next turn then you have the option to give your gogeta critical you can untap two mana and then with the sensor beans you can untap even more mana and then you can just push out more plays and put like a lot of threatening damage on board so the the general figure of majesty was very very clutch and the fact that when you have two on board with an all-cost vegeta and it's really really easy to pull that play off as well then you can give your Gogeta, after you've put the, the hand back and they've drawn three, give that critical triple strike. You can also give the um, the all-cost Vegeta critical with a triple strike as well. And and there's just so much pressure. The, the, the three cards they draw, they won't be able to stop all that damage. So yeah. the, um, that's, that's the reason why we went with all-costs. And... Yeah, so the two of the five drop Gogeta uh, draws two cards, spins two cards. We don't want to see any more uh, because normally we want to have the all-cost Vegeta and the, the vanilla Goku in hand to discard for the hero revived mm -hmm. with the five mana. So you don't want to play it for four that often and you don't want to hard play it for five because generally on that turn you're going to be playing the hero revived. Yeah, the it's kill. just generally yeah. there to sort out some problem boards that you might might need. It is indeed, yeah. So so just annoying blockers that get stuck on board that you just can't get rid of, things like that, that can just clear up a bit of problem. 
and then it's uh, good to go for the kill turn. Uh, we went with three hero revived. Uh, the reason we went with three is we did test two, we did test four just to see what the uh, consistency would be like. Uh, when we had two, we just couldn't see it often enough. When we had four, we were getting really cloggy hands. So when we went down to three, it just seemed to be the perfect number. You'd always see it when you need to see it. You never have to keep it in your opening hand because you're always going to be confident that you're going to draw it. You even search your life, like we said, with a Dragon Ball. So you know if you haven't drawn it and there is one in your life on that turn, um, when, when you've got the four mana, so which would be turn three because of projection, you can just dig your life away with the um, all-cost Vegeta, pick it up, and then you know you've got it for the next turn then. Yeah. So three, three was the perfect number. Uh, we went with one Kami. Um, we tested Kami, we tested Purunga. Um, we just we kind of went with Kami being the better option because it draws you a card and uh, you, you don't have to actually activate that ability that turn. You can just play it out and then sit on it. If people know that you're maining Kami or they see Kami, they have to be respectful of the Kami so they can't overextend their board. If they've already overextended, then you can just blow it all up and it gets rid of everything. Whereas Purunga can leave one card out. So if they just have a few big threats out, then it could be a problem. Again, with Broly as well, they're only going to have two battle cards. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Kami is not going to be too good in that matchup. But the, um, with Prunga, uh, again, you got, you're still going to be sticking one. So we just found yeah, Kami with... to work out a little bit better. Did, did, that, um, did that work out in practice? Because I know like Prunga has different effects as well. So you could, does, you yeah. could leave it on board and just draw because your, your opponent, even though they should kill it, because it's 20k, it's actually quite difficult uh, to get rid yeah. of. Yeah, so um, that, that's uh, one of the theories that we had when we were testing Prunga. But what we found is on turn two, we'd objection. Then we'd be going into the next turn with four mana. And we found it much more efficient just to do the play that brings out the two figure of majesty and an all cost Vegeta. And then, or just to, even just sitting on the two figure majesty, it was just much better because they're still drawing you two cards. You have more mana, like you have all your mana open, and then you have the figure of majesties on board ready because you're always going to have objection on turn two because of how much it digs. Um, and you always keep it in your opening hand. The, the two things that you look for and you mulligan for are Dragon Balls and objection. Um, you can put everything else back because you know you're just going to draw it when the time comes. Yeah, so in terms yeah. of. Um... In terms of playing for wish, do you uh, play? Do you keep Dragon Balls in hand so you can wish as quickly as possible, or are you doing what uh, Shenron did? Well, what players did with Shenron originally is to try and maximise the amount of pluses you got. Yeah, I, I like to try and awaken as early as possible. Um, I do keep a world piece in the opening hands. So you can discard it with a one star ball as well. But I find if you're awakened early, because the way to beat this deck is just to aggro it down and kill it really, really quickly. Yeah. So if I keep all my Dragon Balls and I can awaken turn two or turn three, then um, that's 15k that they have to get through. I'm not attacking them at all. So that takes their leader out of the equation. They have to start comboing to get more damage through. And then the leader ability will just draw me a card every turn as well. So I have a lot more to defend with and it's much harder for them to kill me. So I found Awakening as quick as possible to make my leader 15k. So it's really, really hard for them to kill me. And then I can just defend, defend, defend and then kill them when I've got the uh, five mana then on turn four. Cool. Yeah, so two Crisis Crusher Goku, the absolute MVP of the deck. This card was so good throughout the entire tournament just shutting down the um the one drop crits and then popping them for the vanilla matchup uh destroying the um the androids and the kid gokus as well it puts out so much pressure uh, I, I noticed on stream as well people were questioning the crisis crusher versus the um striving to be the best goku and um, we did test this a lot at locals as well um the striving to be the best uh, is good because it does shut down the attacks from the two drops as well. So the, the training buddy Krillin and whatnot. However, it doesn't actually remove any threats and it's got a barrier himself. Yeah. So if they do combo with the Kid Goku, they cannot pop it with the Android. Um, we actually kind of want them to be popping the Crisis Crusher so they can try and stick their stuff on board. The reason for this is when we get out our Shenron figure of majesty, we don't want them to be destroyed. We need them to stick on board so we can give our Goji the critical. So if I have the Crisis Crushers, either they're going to destroy the Crisis Crusher by comboing with the Goku, and then they've um, 
you know, you've used up a lot of stuff on their turn to pull that off. Or I'll just keep popping their androids and keep popping their Gokus so they can't actually get any momentum going. So they have to remove the Crisis Crusher regardless. And by the time they've done that and removed the Crisis Crushers, then it's safe for the Shenrons of Figure Majesty to stick on board to make sure that they can give the Goji to critical. So Crisis Crusher was absolutely fantastic uh, yeah. throughout the day. Great reasoning there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we played three Figure of Majesty. We have to see it. Uh, I did test two. We didn't see it often enough. And I really, really like playing uh, two of them uh, on turn three getting the two out, getting all the pluses, untapping all that mana, and just really pushing out the pressure that way. So we went up to three, and it was the perfect number. Again, four would be a little bit cloggy, because it's black, you can't charge it. Um, it is a 5k combo, but you'd rather not be stuck with too many in hand. So three was the right number, perfect number to play. Yep. Uh, four of the um, super combo with sparking. Uh, reason for this is we want to awaken as quick as we can and we don't really want to take a lot of damage So we defend a lot with sensu bean and things So if we're coming against a really aggressive deck or they're trying to push us with critical damage We want to be able to defend that really really early in the game and then just put ourselves at an advantage that way We don't need to super combo to get the kill because our goji is going to be so high and they're going to have no cards yeah. So the super combo is, is just purely for defense in this deck uh, Dragon Balls, we went with one of the uh, one star balls. We did test the Super Dragon Ball as well. And though it does draw you quite a lot of cards, it does make the Genenda matchup weaker. And also on turn two, we want to be objection 100% of the time, which means that we don't actually get to awaken if we're doing the objection on turn two. And it kind of makes for a bit of clunky play as well. We can discard our um, world piece with the one star ball as well early in the game. And what makes One Star Ball amazing is you can bring it back with the Dragon Radar and then keep forcing your opponent to discard cards. So sometimes if they did, you know, clear my figure of majesty and I couldn't actually get the kill with the Gogeta because they're on so much life, I, I would just bring out the Gogeta, pass, and the next turn I would just recycle my One Star Balls, force, and then I could swing, take away their cards um, with the One Star Ball continuously while I'm drawing more cards. You can just keep recycling it and keep recycling it and then really put the pressure on the opponent that way then. So a one-star ball was absolutely fantastic. Especially, like, it's, it's basically the turn one play all of the time. Uh, even if you're playing against something like Vanilla, you can hold off playing Crisis Crusher till the next turn, and then you could like pop a card that's out. The one-star ball, it makes them start with a lot less cards. Um, well, one less yeah. card. And, and that's really, really critical because the cards they have in the hand in the early game are going to be cards that they really want because it's what they're mulliganing for. So it's really good to get rid of an important uh, piece for their early game. And then the extra cards then, four cents have been uh, brilliant for the defense. Also brilliant if you have the two-figure majesty. I did have a play where I brought out the, um, the hero revived. Um, give it the triple attack. It got negated on the last one, but then they only had two life left. And because of all the Sensu Beans, I managed to untap four mana with the two um, Shenrons. And then I managed to bring out the um, the five drop Gogeta uh, and then draw two cards. And then that double strike went through because they just had nothing to defend it. So mm -hmm. being able to untap the mana aggressively and also use it defensively, Sensu Bean is such a fantastic card. It's still really, it's really amazing. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then four Reese's Coercion. Uh, the reason we played this, and we said we'd only ever played up four, is because it's really it really shines when you have multiple of them to play in one turn. Because it restands that mana, you can just keep negating and negating and negating over and over, even with the the one mana open, which is why the um, the double Shenra figure Majesty and the all cost Vegeta play on turn three. If you play all of them together, it's fantastic because you have that one mana open. Then when they're trying to swing at you and kill you, you can just keep dropping the Whis over and over and over because you know 100% that they're going to be dead next turn. So you can just uh, wall up with the Whis's coercion and it's really, really hard to push through. Um, in this stream as well, if any of you guys did watch that, my opponent had six black cards in the drop. They had one on board and the leader. They tried to swing with the leader, I negated with Whis. They tried to swing with the minion on board, I negated with Whis. That completely shut down the Demigra play because they had five... Uh, open mana, which meant if they wanted to get another attack, they had to pay something to bring it out, which meant no Demigra on that turn. So I could safely defend, and I only needed the one mana open because we could just continually negate negate for free, which is why it's amazing. Uh, for objection, we have to see this card in our opening hand. This is what we really, really dig for. Getting to that kill turn a turn earlier is really, really important. 
and just having that extra mana to be able to um, push the plays out a lot faster. Also, it gets us to being able to use our world piece earlier as well because it's online faster yeah. because you need four mana to be able to play it. Mm -hmm. uh, three Dragon Radar. Again, we tested two, we tested four. Um, when we tested four, it was a little bit cloggy because by the time you get the kill turn, um, you don't really want to be having lots of Dragon Radars in hand because you've removed your Dragon Balls from the drop, so they're kind of dead. Yeah. There did come a point where I did pick up a world piece from the drop and then paid the mana to play it um, to bring out another Gogeta, but if you have four, it's going to start getting really, really clunky because you don't have too many options to play it because, you know, turn one, one star ball, turn two, objection into either Crisis Crusher, Kami, or you could do the Dragon Radar then. But then turn four is generally going to be you're pushing out your plays then. So, yeah, three three was the, um, the right number to play on this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, one power burst, the sparking the gate, just in case we ever did get into trouble where we were tapped out and they were pushing pressure. Um, power burst uh, did come in really, really fantastic. We only play one. I don't think we'd need to play any more because um, well, once, once you see it, it's, it's, it's literally just there as that emergency sparking the yeah, gate. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very rare that you will actually use it, but it's there uh, just in case. And it can get the Kami back and it can also get our side decked. Um, uh, Explorer Bulmers, not Explorer Bulmers, Dangerous Journey Bulmers back as well yes. for the um, for the Janemba matchup, which is uh, really, really useful. Uh, three World Peace, again, we tested all the different numbers of World Peace uh, and we found three was the right amount. You don't need four because you can get it back with Dragon Radar from the drop and you only need to see one in your opening hand, discard it with one star ball, get it back when you awaken and then the, the Dragon Radars can keep bringing it back from drop then if you need to. Uh, yeah, three was the perfect number to play on that one. Mm -hmm. So that's it for the main. Um, I don't know if I'd actually change anything. I'd maybe drop the Kami for something. Cause it, it, it looks pretty streamlined to me, to be yeah. honest, especially with the um, exclamations that you gave. I was going to ask about um, why you went for mono blue instead of blue yellow. But from your explanations, it would seem that blue yellow would be a bit overkill and yeah. it would hit the consistency of what you're trying to do. It, it does, yeah. So we tested that, but we found um, we just didn't have enough blue cards to pay the blue costs or the um, the, the yellow, because a lot of the time on turn five, yeah, we, um, if I'm going for the double figure of majesty play, um, we can have the mana open for the um, badring laser, but there's not really a lot that the yellow adds. Um, it can add the badring laser to stop the time magic, but the odds of them drawing the one time magic off three cards is, is going to be quite low. Even if they do time magic you, they only have two to three cards left to come back with, which isn't going to be enough. It's just not going to be that impactful anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference in that respect. So we didn't think the badring laser was really worthwhile playing. Flying Nimbus, while being good, we found the, uh, the Sensu Beans and the Mises Objections more than enough to defend against. And... Um, the, the, the ratios we have here with the black and blue just seem to, to be the most consistent. I did play a mirror match in top 16 as well, who were playing the um, the blue-yellow variant, but um, it, this this build just seemed to be a lot more consistent and, and stronger, and it managed to win out that way. Yep. Uh, for the, the side deck, we did put in two uh, more Borgos, just in case we did come across anything that untaps, like the, the Chilai Limo, with a freezer leader or any kind of rogue decks that we weren't really expecting that could do things like that so it was there just in case um we didn't really side it in we didn't need it but it's too good not to side because uh, what, what it's good against it's really good against and it's mm -hmm. sure. it's, it's definitely worth having uh two mafubas um we thought victory strike would be quite quite a big thing um so we, we put them in anyway if we can uh, if we're playing against a victory strike deck and we know we're going on to that kill turn, we can just leave leave our mana open. We can just world peace for free, um, you know, start bringing out threats as well. So they have a really difficult choice of what they're going to rest. And you pretty much will have the mana to be able to move over the victory strike so as they what, go for the kill. Um, four energy? Yes, yeah, so if, if they're going into four energy, yeah, you're going to have four. So um, even if they tap the three, the three mana there... Um, they're gonna it's likely they're gonna swing with the height of mastery to try and kill you first or they'll try and swing with something else if they don't because they um and they just go for the the victory strike kill 
then yeah it, it can be a little bit painful yeah. oh yeah I, d but... I definitely wouldn't swing with height because then you can be up yeah. and yeah all that stuff. yeah yeah because then yeah you can be up and bring it out but um yeah it's, 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 it has been really strong i did manage to pull her off against one of the victory strike players because um i just managed to like ramp so fast that uh, by the time they brought it out, I, I had so much open mana that they couldn't really put the pressure through. But it's, it's other things as well. Like it's um, in, a, in a Broly match as well, if they're swinging with one of the, the big Broly's or the um, the four drop, I believe, you can just drop them a Fuber on that and that can shut them out for long enough to, to swing the momentum way back in your favor as well. Yeah, it would so have to be the four drop. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, even in a, a mirror match as well, say for example, you know, it's. Um, if they starting out, then it's kind of good to leave two mana open. So when they go into the kill turn, you have a chance to draw into Mufubas, your Weezes, Coercions. There's a lot there's a lot of things that you can draw into to really shut them down. So it can really, really help in the mirror match as well. Mm -hmm. uh, two Dangerous Journey Bulma um, for the Janemba matchup. I did play a Janemba matchup in the top four and I lost. But it was really, really, really close. It was literally just what you had won, a, won the gate left for the, the last attack, which which sealed it. It was a crazy, crazy close game. But the Dangerous Journey Bulmers are absolutely fantastic because they can put their three cards back in. And those three cards they can put back in include the Gogetas. So if they do mill you one condition, you can just put it back and then draw it and then um, put the pressure out that way. So really, really fantastic card. I'd definitely keep that on the side. Yeah. Uh, Black Mass Saiyan. Um, we played this just in case we needed extra ways to, to dig into our life for... Um, cards if we're playing against any kind of stall deck so like victory strike we could play it in just to, to see cards more cards in our life just so we're able to defend better or if there was any kind of niche decks like you know the chile limo or anything rogue like that which will start using chain yeah, of so effects to bring stuff good, out good rogue killer yeah 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 so we had that just just in case for for rogue um didn't really use it though but Again, it, it, it could potentially be cut. It all depends on, on what you're expecting to see. Uh, the one Dende in the side, um, the one really, really nice trick with Dende, which uh, people may not realize, is you can pay the two mana to dump one of their energy, and then Dende goes to the drop. Then you can use your Shenron Figure Majesty, yep. can bring back a two drop or less from the drop, uh, and then play it. So you can bring back your Dende, you draw a card, you also draw a card off the Figure of Majesty, and then you can tap another two mana and dump more energy. So you can really, every turn you can do that and just keep locking their energy down yeah, so they can, can't get any plays. You then. can just lock out the mirror match, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic to do that. Uh, two Kronoa, because if you don't respect Shagesh as a card, then you're going to be in for a bad time. It's <laughs> really, really strong. <laughs> and uh, there, there were quite a few Shagesh decks uh, as well. In the last round I played against... Um, a guy with the uh, the Broly hide the mastery victory strike, so he played the he played Shigashes as well. So when I, when I put that down, completely shut down the Shigash, and I knew I was going to be safe. Then I wasn't going to get you know Shigash Kid Goku. I'm oh, not Kid Goku. You know the the striver to be the best Vegeta. Sorry. Yes. That pops, yeah. That, uh, that one kills yeah, the barrier. barrier. It does. Yeah. So then it untaps uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Really strong. So. <laughs> Yeah, Kronoa was absolutely fantastic. Um, again, like all of these are targets for power burst. If you do need to emergency power burst, you can bring it back, then it's a one drop draw card. So it's, it's brilliant. Uh, Heavenly Wizard Demigra, uh, two of that. Brilliant for the Broly matchup and for the baby Vegeta matchup. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they bring out their big ape, you can just swing, uh, combo with the, the Heavenly Wizard Demigra, gets rid of their big ape. That uh, can really put a lot of pressure what and set them back. What would you actually be swinging with? Uh, so there's you'd, you'd have to um, push out some VR one drops to be able to swing with it. So when you do, if you do come up against Baby Vegeta, that's when you put in the Dark Power Mass Saiyan, Dangerous Journey Bulma, like Borgos, all of these small drops. Yeah. So, so just something, the, something yeah. to die, and then you play another one. Yes, and then you play cool. another one. Yeah. Um, and and then you basically like steamroll from there, then because it's really hard for them to come back. Yeah. Uh, and same with the the Broly as well, because Broly's a really, really, really hard matchup for this deck. So once they just go all in on their Broly, if you can just um, defend and stay alive on your turn, you just um, get rid of their, their Broly with the Demigra, and then it's really, really hard for them to come back from that then because they've taken so much damage from the self-harm, and it's, they'd have to get the chain going again. It's just really, really difficult for them to do mm -hmm. so. So it's, it's really great to swing the, the match back. Uh, two Mercenary Tau. Um, 
th this was for any kind of hand control decks, and I did play against Slug round one as well. Uh, do, but do you I actually don't... need it against Slug because you no. you plus so much yeah. anyway? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say yeah because you end up drawing so much you don't really need it, but um, it, it's it's nice because this it can come out as a, a one one drop, um, and it can just start swinging for a bit of damage if you want to put the pressure down as well, because um, you're gonna put the hand back regardless anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's. It's, if, if it's out, it kind of stops them from making plays as well. It kind of makes them hold their cards a little bit more. You don't need it because you do plus so much, but it kind of slows them down a little bit. So they're not going to be pushing so hard to try and kill you because you, you need to be able to survive. So like with Slug, for example, they, they, they have to swing and then the card makes you discard a card. So if you've got this out, they're not going to be swinging as much, which means you're not taking as much damage, which means you're not going to get pressured, killed, uh, and then you're able to do your kill turn in a lot more comfortable, safer way then. Yeah, nice. And then the finally the third Crisis Crusher for the um, the vanilla matchup was absolutely fantastic because you know they're going to pop a, uh, the, one of them with the um, Android Kid Goku combo. If you can just keep pumping out the Crisis Crushers, they, they won't be able to get any, as much advantage. They can't... They can't do anything to kill you from them then. And if you're against any kind of aggro deck that plays the one drop crits, it's absolutely fantastic to be able to defend you against those. I found Crisis Crusher so much better than Goku Striving. Even though Striving is a blue, yeah. the Crisis Crusher just put in the work because it's also, like we said, a target to try and be removed, which means that uh, they're using the remover on Crisis Crusher. So your Shenron Figure of Majesty is going to be safe then. Yeah, it doesn't just store your opponent, it actually damages them as well. With does, um, yeah. striving to do the best, you can all. I mean, in the case of Kid Goku, they've got their three drops. They can just swing over. So. Exactly, yeah. And their 30k. And then they're going to have a board full of Kid Gokus and Androids. So if you go for the, the kill or you're going for any kind of push, they can just start comboing with those Kid Gokus and start popping your things. Yeah. So you're not going to get crit and, and your figure of majesty is not going to be safe. And it's just it's just not going to be as, as clean a kill. So the, the Crisis Crusher is the target for their removal. And it just does the job perfectly. Great, great. Thank you for the explanations. Really good. No uh, what uh, what did you play against on the day? So my first matchup was against Slug Hand Control. Uh -huh. um, the deck just has the really, really strong matchup against Hand Control. Yeah. They they just couldn't get anything rolling because we plus too much, and then the Mercenary Towers on board, forcing them to not play, so they can't get any damage through. So it's just. Yeah, it was just um, a straightforward matchup. Sure. Uh, the, the guy was really, really nice though, and he did really well. I think I'm pretty sure he won all the rest of his matches, but he just had an unlucky matchup against me. Um, I played against Victory Strike round two with Hyder Mastery. Um, he was playing the Chi Lai Limo leader with okay. the. Um, it uses their the Shenron ability then to bring out two super combos from deck. Uh, that that was a fair, fairly tough match, but again, the, the Shenron Gogeta has a pretty good matchup against that, just because we can ramp up faster because um, they they play yellow and then we just put their hand back and then they can't really. Yeah, you do can plus all you there. want, but then t turn five <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have three in hand. Yeah, yeah. So we we, we were just faster. Uh, there's nothing much they could do there. Um, round three, I played against the Freezer Denton Day. That, that was really, really tough. That matchup is really, really hard. I ended up drawing that one. Okay. Because um, of the fact that the, the Clanatera Mecha Freezer can just yeah. look at your hand and then pull anything from your hand. It's, so, got, it's uh, got good hand control and it's got aggro. So. It does, yeah. Yeah, really, really strong aggro. And uh, the, gr the great thing about that deck is um, if people are playing against Shenron Gogeta, they can just start pulling out the vanilla Gokus instead of your super combos. If they, they, they call all of your vanilla combos, uh, your vanilla Gokus, you don't have any to discard for the Gogeta, so you can't yeah. actually play it until turn seven, which is you know so much worse. So it's it's a, it's a it is a great way to counter the deck, but it's, it's it's a very very interesting matchup, very very fun to play, very very difficult. I think it's the first person to make a mistake loses in that matchup. It's crazy, mm. but yeah, really really good. And then lastly, I played against another Victory Strike uh, Hyder Mastery deck, uh, but Cronoa just put in all the work on that matchup because that was the the Broly one, so. And the, and the Crisis Crusher as well. They couldn't swing with the one-drop Krillins to start critting and, and drawing the cards. So it, it was just too much pressure that way. Yeah. Uh, in the top 16, I played the Mirror Match in the first one, but that was a blue-yellow build. Um, the blue build, I feel, is a lot stronger in the Mirror Match, um, a lot more consistent, so it, was, it managed to win out that way. I played against Vanilla in the on the live stream for top 8. 
um, yes. uh, which I won that. Uh, yeah, the Crisis Crusher was clutch in that one. Just being able to summon Crisis Crusher over and over in a game to, to completely lock out the opponent. And summoning the double figure of majesty was absolutely fantastic as yeah. well. Because I think you could, you could have won much. that one a bit quicker because there was the, yeah. uh, the Gogeta incident uh, where you put back the 8 and the Kid Koo. Yeah, yeah. So the, I, I still am quite unsure on that ruling. There's been a lot of debate back and forth because yeah. the way it was it's... ruled is if the, the Android and the Kid Goku leave, um, then the, 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 the player, the home player, gets to yeah, it's, choose it's the a, order. It's a weird ruling that when, when they leave uh, simultaneously, even though it's supposed to be simultaneously, yeah. the, the owner of the cards gets to choose the, or, the actual order they leave in, even though yeah. it's simultaneous. Um, yeah. But Gogeta obviously would get to choose the order that they get put back into deck. Yeah, Gogeta spe says it specifies. So there's it it a lot of confusion regarding that. But yeah, it, it got ruled that Gogeta died. It was unfortunate. But um, so I ended up losing that game. But then I won the next two games then. Um, just with the, the Figure of Majesty and Crisis Crusher pressure. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. And then I lost the very, very, very close uh, Janemba match of them um in the the top four match um he took the first one with mill out i won the second one with the just aggro pressure and then in the last one with the three cards he pulled back he just had enough negates to be able to stop me because the, um, yeah. the leader had the that one happened. extra yeah it, it was just unfortunate there's i couldn't put any more cards down and then i just got built next to him but it was, it was a really 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 good match really really close it could have gone either way so it was it was brilliant fantastic tournament yeah great um Thank you for that. Is there anything you want to add? I think we've been pretty comprehensive with everything. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's everything. There's, there's not much I'd really change. You know, the, the list feels really, really consistent, really, really solid. It has so many strong matchups as Would well. Would you keep the yeah. towels in there, in the side? Uh, I'd consider changing them. Uh, for what, I'm not too sure yet. Maybe striving, but I feel like I don't really want to put striving in because I'd rather than be using their removal to kill the, the kid Gokus. Yeah. So it's it's hard to say i suppose it would depend on what we're expecting to see on on the actual day um, yeah sure. what like yeah what we're expecting to be popular but yeah it, it has enough road counters it has a good counter against the majority of the uh, top tier decks right now so it's, it's a very very strong pick i think yeah nice yeah i i definitely didn't expect gushi to be as dominant as it was um i, I knew it was going to be a thing but actually it, it, it did a lot better than i thought it would do so yeah yeah we, ex we expected it to fly quite under the radar people weren't really going to expect it because super shenron was just too aggro it couldn't stand up to yeah, it yeah there's just without bardock there's just not that many hyper yeah. aggro decks around yeah yeah with the expansions is... it might change i guess but um, we'll see potentially yeah yeah um but it, if, if it's built with an, enough defense it, it can survive quite a lot because storm was just crazy crazy strong with the bardock it was it, it made anything like this difficult but yeah what well, would you say your, well. what would you say your current worst matchup would be probably broly because they can if, if they have the, the pieces to go straight up into that eight drop and just keep going aggro 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 then it's going to be um really difficult to defend because the broly's are so strong they have so much um attack power and they can do it like you know turn two turn three yeah. so it can be quite difficult to defend and survive against it um it's, it's very heavily favored for the broly but um it's it's not unwinnable by any means and uh yeah and they, they have to have all the right pieces if, if they don't kill you then generally you, you can just swing the board straight back and then you can you can kill them because uh, you can deal with the broly and just just finish them off but you know, the, that five drop Gogeta comes out on turn three by discarding and then you shuffle the two back, draw two cards and you, you're just in such a strong position but you have to survive that onslaught so Broly's a tough matchup um, Broly GT as well, anything that's like super super aggro really really early and tries to kill you by like turn two, turn three can be difficult but any kind of format where it's kind of slower um, then this deck is, is going to be a, a real contender Yep sure and your what do you feel about the Geneva match? Uh, I feel like it, it's, it's fairly even from, from when we were testing and from my matches as well. It's, it, all, it all depends. Um, 
how it goes. So like a lot of the time as well, if you use the one star ball, you want to discard another dragon ball. So you're not drawing. You don't want to draw too much. You want to try and keep your combo pieces um, in your hand early as well. Just so you know you have them. And then you just got to be really, really careful with your draws, really careful with your figure of majesties. Um, and then just really calculate the, the maximum damage that you can push out. You can be really aggro early in the game as well. If you've got any um, small drops that you're bringing out, you can uh, swing with, you can start putting the pressure. It's okay to start dealing damage. You want to get them to uh, low, uh, as low as you can if possible. But the, it, it all depends, you know, how many negates they draw, if they've left mana open, it's... Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting matchup, but it's, it is quite close, because, you, you know, you, you put the hand back, they, they draw three cards. If they have no negates, they're dead. But yep. they can draw three negates, which means they can yep. just completely stop what you're doing, you know. I guess the perhaps you could put, um, if you side in a TN, that would lock the matchup after a Gogeta. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think... TN, TN was um, is, is something I would definitely consider putting in. The the only reason I didn't to begin with was because I'd play it and then it would be, you know, I, I can't do the Gogeta in the same turn, but if I've got the Figure of Majesty open, then it would be worth the two Figure of Majesties. Then I could untap to play the TN as well on the same turn, yeah. which um, I didn't really consider that possibility because I didn't realize like how often the, the double um, Shannon Figure of Majesty was going to be you know my go-to play mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> yeah the, the tns would definitely be really really strong in the side deck and it would really help swing that match up in your favor okay great um thank you very much for that that was uh, really really good uh, and <laughs> do you have any shout outs before we go uh just all the guys from swansea uh they, they've been a massive help um you know, constructing the list, suggesting what cards to play. Um, my friend Jan for, for selecting the um, saying about the four weeks coercion. They were absolutely fantastic. Really great idea to put them in. So yeah, the, the local guys, absolutely fantastic input on the deck. And yeah, that's, that's basically it, I guess. Yeah. What's your local shop called? Uh, Gamers Emporium in Swansea. Great. Um, well, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, please leave it in the comments below. And I'm, I'm sure Adam will be more than happy to address them for you. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, Adam. And uh, good luck in future events. Hopefully see you there. Um, uh, thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye. Cheers.